All right, here's the third and for this group final video. Um, there may be more in the future, but here we're going to call this mix and match or following the weird road. And the reason why it's mix and match and a weird road is we're going to start looking at things in a slightly different way. Um, we could begin with a picture like this, and all of my pictures are found via Deviant Art. Um, I don't own the rights to any of these, and so, you know, I don't own them. Um, but the point is, is, if we look at this picture the and we follow the waterfall, the quick description of this picture is a rundown or rundown building or rundown train station. I mean, it's quick and dirty. Um, when we talk story about this picture, then the story of this is that this is possibly an old train station that was, you know, burned up in a fire and nobody's ever bothered to rebuild. And then when we look at details, if the story says it's an old train station that was burned up in a fire, then the fact that there's a hole in the ceiling, you can see damage in different parts of the building, um, that there's rust and debris falling in places only supports the story. It doesn't have to be true, it just has to inform the way that you're choosing to describe this. And, you know, that's one part. But we're not dealing anymore with just one picture. We're dealing with this picture as well. And so when we look at this, the first thing that comes to many people's mind is Alice in Wonderland. And so if you were to tell me, hey, my feeling on this is Alice in Wonderland, I get that. The reason I get that is the story, it's a girl who fell down a hole, you know, did either the drink me or eat me, whichever one makes Alice bigger, and now she is filling out the space that she's in. Uh, it doesn't matter whether or not it's true, it just is. And the moment this becomes Alice in Wonderland and she's down the rabbit hole, then the details that we look at, that she's too big for the space she's in, that the flower next to her is also too big, but that the, the, um, the tile pattern on the floor underneath her is too small, then that supports it. But, you know, that's putting the waterfall in practice for this picture and this picture, which leads us to what happens when I ask you to put both of these pictures together. Well, the first thing you have to do is to decide which picture is dominant and which picture is... Um, well, submissive is the word that comes to mind, but that's not the right word. So you're going to have a primary picture and a secondary picture. Much better phrasing. So the primary picture in this case is probably going to be the, the woman. We can identify with the woman. We can identify with, with Alice in Wonderland. But the moment we sit there and say, okay, now I want you to describe this picture, these two pictures together, then you still have to come up with a waterfall. The top one is still probably going to be Alice in Wonderland. The story is probably going to be something along the lines of this girl went to this train platform, fell down a hole, and ended up here, and after eating the cookie, started to grow and fill out the space. So that's the story, and when you begin to look at details, there's an arch with a girl, an arch at the door there. We begin to look for details in both pictures that support that. But what you will find is, is that you will support Alice in Wonderland very briefly with the secondary picture of the train depot um, and not spend a lot of time on it. So while the train depot is important only in the sense that that is how Alice got to where she's at, it is only a secondary object much like the other secondary objects we dealt with in a single picture. We could do the same thing with this picture where the overall feeling of this is really just a Chinese girl. She could be a Chinese princess, she could be a Chinese prostitute, she could be an Asian prostitute, she could be anything you want her to be so long as you get the feeling. The next step down, if she's a Chinese princess, is that she's a Chinese princess who has lost her love. Or she's a Chinese princess who is waiting for a arranged marriage, or she's something. You just have to create that, and then if that's the case, then we start to look at the details, specific elements of the picture, that come out to support that she's a Chinese princess. Well, the fact that she's Asian supports she's Chinese. Her dark hair, maybe, the color of her eyes, that there's jewelry, jewels around her eyes. Um, maybe it's even the form of dress that she's wearing that supports that. It doesn't matter what, so long as your idea your feeling, your story, and your description all support each other. The feeling and the story should lead to the description. And while I don't ever need to know what the feeling and the story are, unless I ask for it, the description is going to be informed by that. And not only that, but we don't care what's in the background the moment we decide that she is a lonely Chinese princess.
At the same time, we look at this alley, and yes, you get to deal with alleys with me, and we say, oh, well, this is an alley. Well, what kind of alley is it? It could be any kind of alley from, you know, a courtyard at the bottom of a castle to, you know, a alley in Venice to who knows what. It's up to you to determine what this is. Um, but if she's a princess, then this becomes a castle, and that becomes important because when we combine princess with this alley, then this isn't just an alley. This is a castle. This is a mansion. This is something important, and the way she is looking then defines what she is looking at in terms of this alley. And so while our primary picture is the princess and our secondary picture may be the alley, we are going to de define her and even the alley in terms of of her being our primary picture. Now, it doesn't have to be her. I use a person because I want you to focus in one area. But the primary picture can be the alley. And so if this is an alley, then how does that define her? And you would have to look at that and determine that for yourself. I'm making suggestions, but in any class, there is often a somewhat protected conversation in any one of these pictures that helps define and determine exactly what it is we're meant to be seeing in this combination of pictures. We could do this again with this picture. Instead of an individual, we're looking at a field. And in this case, it could be a stormy farm field. It could just be a farm field. It could be a pasture. It's anything that effectively describes this to you. I've had classes that have only focused on the clouds, and so it's stormy weather. I've had classes that have only focused on the field, and so it's a pasture or a field of grass or hay. It doesn't matter so long as when you have focused on what this is to you, that you are able to then express it to me in a way that I understand it. So if this is stormy weather, well, the story is, is that the clouds have moved in and the storm is about to start. And so anything that, that I ask you to describe beyond that deals with that story. If this is a pasture or um, a field of grass or hay, then you know it's a field that has been planted and cultivated and watered and is getting ready to be mowed. And that is perfectly fine. The idea with this is to begin building a series of connections such that when you get down to the level of evidence or detail, that those details work together in a way that shows me, that lets me see what you see. I need to see what you see. It doesn't matter what I see in this picture because I don't see, I'm not always going to see the same thing you do. But if I can read what you've described and then look at the picture and say, oh yeah, I could see that, then you've successfully described the picture. Now, with this picture, since we're combining things, we're down that weird road, we combine this with this picture, which is a cowgirl or an angry cowgirl or an outlaw cowgirl. Basically, I don't give you much choice because she's wearing a cowboy hat, denim, and has two six shooters. And so while you can come up with other descriptions of this, um, chances are you're going to see Desperado or cowgirl, angry, something, because why else would she be holding a couple of six shooters? So again, when we flip this, um, you're going to describe one picture in terms of the other, but you're not going to do both. And the fact that there's a field, whether it's stormy or not, and the fact that you have a cowgirl really just defines how you describe it and not necessarily um, that it's being described. Because here, if we define this in terms of the angry cowgirl, then the fact that this is a field in stormy weather takes on more meaning. If we describe the field as a pasture of hay or straw that is ready to be mowed, then her being angry might be in terms of a father, brother, boyfriend, lover, somebody um, having been killed as a result of the land. And if you've never been west where water and land is that important, then you know, that doesn't necessarily take on meaning, but it can based off of what we see and how we combine the two pictures. But even here, one picture, the girl, or the other picture, the field, are going to be the primary picture, and the other one will always be secondary. You will never, at least for me, and hopefully never ever, have two primary pictures. You always want to consider things as, here's my primary picture, here's my primary idea, and anything that is presented to me after this is secondary to the primary. And so in most of these pictures, you're going to look at this and you're possibly going to see the individual as the primary and the location or the place as secondary. Here, I think, is the last picture or the combination of pictures. 
Um, but once again, we look at this, and rather than looking at them separately, I give you the onus of looking at them together. You have a woman in a window with a bunch of debris. There's dirt around the window, so this has been flooded or it's been dirty. It's not necessarily a great place. When you really look at the woman, she's not necessarily attractive in body. Um, on the left, this is either a stream or a storm sewer or something, and the water's red and the vibrancy is in the greenness with the barrel vault uh, that the water is heading to. And so in combining these, you know, some people say that the combination of these two pictures is a fairy princess in her kingdom. And this is just an example. And once we take that combination of description, then we look at the picture on the left, and this becomes an entrance to a fairy kingdom. And the picture on the right, she becomes the fairy princess. Um, at that point, what do we start to ignore? Well, does the water matter? Probably not. Does the trash on the ground matter? Probably not. You begin to look at things not in terms of what they are, or but rather what they might be, and how we take two not related objects or disparate objects, and we shove them together in a way that allows us to see them in a different light. Ultimately, what you're going to do and it's not just with pictures. I start with pictures because we can concretely see pictures. We can talk about them. I can say, yes, I see what you see. But ultimately, what we want you to do is to begin not just looking at pictures, but ideas and saying, you know what? I can give Mr. Hathaway or another teacher um, an understanding of what I understand. And that's where this comes to. You can't perfectly describe anything to me. You can't perfectly tell me what it is I'm meant to expect. But what you can do is, in your own way, tell me what you understand or what you see so that I, in turn, can then understand the way you do or I can see in the way that you see. And by doing that, we then fulfill the obligation of the waterfall and we begin to look at writing in the frame which we talked about to begin with and the various parts of the frame um, if, from a new perspective and so it doesn't become a matter of how do we do things but rather when and where do we do different things and so at this point when you start to look at at the different pictures and the elements that those pictures have, we're not looking at them as two large objects, two things that have to be individually described, but as two things that can be described in terms of a central feeling and a central story. And that here is what the mix and match in the Weird Road is. It's taking two things that may not necessarily work together and then making them work together. And in the future, what I will do is I will show you um, cards that have meaning if you want to know the meaning, but they're really just bright pictures that when we put them together, we then have to make those things have meaning. And that's how the human mind works. We want to connect things together, even though they may not necessarily have a connection.